Hey everyone, this is Pastor B. Listen, we've been talking about spiritual warfare for the last couple of weeks and I believe this is going to be the best session ever, not because I'm going to be talking, but because God has given me a prophetic word and I'm going to share that word with you, but you got to wait until the end of the broadcast. So listen, tune in, don't stop. And at the end of that broadcast, I'm going to give you a word that God has given me for you. Restoration Christian Ministries presents Words to Inspire You. A time for sharing the things that will bring encouragement to your hearts and enlightenment to your minds. Inspirational words to keep you focused on the things of the kingdom of God and his Christ. Join us now and enjoy Words to Inspire You with your host, Pastor John Bazemore. Hello everyone, this is Pastor B, and I welcome you again to Words to Inspire You. Well, we're at our last series for this uh, lesson on uh, spiritual warfare. We are going to continue where we left off last week. Last week we talked about the 12 strongmen. We talked about actually six of the 12 strongmen that we face from the enemy. Uh, those six were um, jealousy, a lion spirit, familiar spirits, a perverse spirit what else was it a spirit of whoredom and a spirit of heaviness so we want to continue uh, that because I think it's important that we understand and I, I may have said this but I want to say it again I think it's important that we understand what we're fighting against because demons love to hide and if you call out the wrong spirit that spirit may come out but the the strong man will still be there and you'll find yourself falling back into the things that you were into before so now again we talked about the first six on last week this week we're going to start with the uh, spirit of infirmity now we have all heard about infirmity we all recognize i believe and understand that this is an actual spirit that works in our body many times when we talk about being sick unfortunately we claim these sicknesses as being something that's ours and it's not but it's an infirmity this is a result of sin from the very beginning and this spirit of infirmity was loosed onto mankind because of sin and now they try to wreak havoc in our bodies but thank god uh, we have uh, authority over this now this spirit of infirmity is actually a uh, mention in the Bible in Luke chapter 13 verse 14 now let me say this when you go to a doctor one of two things or one or two things are going to happen or maybe even both you're gonna get a diagnosis and then you will end up getting a prognosis the diagnosis is gonna tell you what's wrong with you but now the prognosis tells you what you can expect to happen so now do you not understand that the Lord has done the same thing you know with this death burial and resurrection the diagnosis was sin but the prognosis if we believe in him is eternal life by believing on him through his blood so we can't accept the sicknesses and diseases uh, that you know we are getting people say I have this I have that no you don't have anything other than the thing that you are claiming and allowing the spirit of infirmity to put on your body we do have authority over these things the next spirit I want to mention is this a uh, deaf and dumb spirit now this is an unusual spirit because it really masquerades sometimes as something else if you've ever seen let me tell you how you can recognize this spirit now this actually is mentioned in mark chapter 9 verses 17 through 25 and matthew chapter 17 verses uh, 14 and 15. now here here is how this spirit is recognized um epilepsy all forms of seizures uh, insanity anorexia these are the the traits or the attributes or the things that this particular spirit um will bring on into your mind or into your body so we have to recognize what we're dealing with we are dealing with a spirit your your child is just not having seizures now there may be some physical things in your body so i don't want to try to discount um seizures as something real but what i'm saying is the root the foundation of these things are demonic spirits and we really need to understand that so i always say this start at the beginning start at the foundation 
If you want to rid someone of seizures and things of this nature, listen, if you're getting medication from a doctor, take your medication. But in the interim, you need to bind these spirits in the name of Jesus. And it's a deaf and dumb spirit. You don't bind the spirit of anorexia. That's it. No, you bind that deaf and dumb spirit as well as suicide. This The Bible talks about this child uh, many times wanting to throw himself uh, because this this uh, demon that was in him, it made him throw himself into fires and throw himself into water because he didn't want this demon to be in him. So he was actually trying to commit suicide. And that's why I have this uh, particular demon listed under this deaf and dumb spirit. So again, uh, some of the attributes, suicide, epilepsy, all forms of seizures, insanity, and anorexia. Now let's go a little further. The spirit of fear. Now, we all know about this. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter, what is that? First Tim 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we understand this spirit does not come from God. It's right there in the word of God. This is a spirit right from the pit of hell. This is not from God. And listen, these are the attributes of this spirit. And this is how you know if you are being actually harassed by one of these spirits. This, these are the uh, signs. Torment, terror, inferiority complex, fear of... Um, Fear of uh, darkness, phobias, nightmares. So if you're being, if you're really experiencing a lot of nightmares, you're probably dealing with a spirit of fear. So again, you can take authority over this thing in the name of Jesus. Believers, listen, we should not walk around afraid. You know, we should not walk around in fear. We're talking about phobias, you know. Well, I got a phobia for this and I have a phobia for that. No, no, no. That's not you. That's not you, believers. Listen to me. That's not you. That is a spirit, the spirit of fear that is working in your mind trying to make you believe that it's you. But again, you have authority that you can take uh, authority over this spirit in the name of Jesus. So now again, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, this uh, spirit does not come from God. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and soundness of mind. So now let's go to the very next one. The spirit of pride. Now, I, I, I really, I really want to spend a moment with this one, uh, only because this is the one that seems to elude believers. You know, because this spirit is very clever. Now, we 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 see a lot of things happening happening, particularly in the body of Christ, particularly you know amongst the church. It, it's really sad, believers. A lot of infighting. You know, a lot of, um, you know, we are condemned, you know, homosexuality. We are condemned, you know, um, sleeping with someone's, you know, uh, husband or wife, adultery. We're condemned fornication. We're condemned doing drugs, smoking cigarettes and being a wine bibbler. We're, we're condemned all of these things. But, you know, the one thing that we do not deal with, and that's pride. Because most of the time when pride has you in its grip, you don't believe that you have it. Now, again, here's some of the attributes of that. Fighting, contentions, self-righteousness. Now think about that, self-righteousness, which was the actual, Jesus said it's the leaven. It's the thing that makes the Pharisees so impure because they think they're better than everybody else. And you know, we, we actually have a group of people right now in this country, and I'm not gonna call what, what they call themselves, but there are a group of people in this country that seriously believe that Jesus belongs to them and they are somehow better than everybody else. That is not the case. As a matter of fact, that is the one thing that Jesus hates is self-righteousness or contention. People that are sowing discord amongst their brethren. So now when you see this type of thing of infighting, contentions, self-righteousness, people are divided and they can't even receive instructions. So when you're dealing with people that cannot even receive instructions from you, you know you're dealing with the spirit of pride. This is the thing that really uh, haunted uh, Absalom. He was so prideful that he wanted what his father had and he, he would do anything to take it. And these are contentions. These, this is self-righteousness in its purest form. So now, again, as believers, we have to take authority over this in the name of Jesus. If you 
you see somebody and I don't care what you say to them, they can't receive instructions. They are dealing with a spirit of pride. They, they really need, you know, to, to really check themselves and you need to talk to them about what they're dealing with because most of the time you don't know because people that are self-righteous, what does that mean? They believe they are right. So pride is the one spirit that can sneak up on you and you will not even realize it most of the time. I would probably say 90% of the time, this spirit is recognized by other people, not the person that's dealing with it. Next is the spirit of bondage. Now this, this covers all addictions. Uh, this is in Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Now, whether it's a, a drug addiction or a cigarette addiction, addiction to pornography, addiction to certain types of food, uh, whatever it may be, all addictions fall under this spirit of bondage. So now, when you're dealing with a person, let's say that that's, um, that has a cigarette addiction, you don't, you know, cast it out by you in the name of Jesus, you cigarette spirit. There's no such thing, folks. There's no cigarette spirit. That is a spirit of bondage that that person is dealing with. So now, that spirit of bondage uh, covers all of these different types of addictions. And it's a strong spirit to deal with because it may start, you know, in your mind, but then it gets into your system. It's like nicotine. It gets into your system and your body starts craving this thing. And more times than not, the only way, and particularly drugs and certain types of drugs, the only way that you can rid yourself of this is, is, is if you get delivered by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And the last one is the spirit of Antichrist. This is mentioned in 1 John chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. And this is any spirit that denies Jesus is the Messiah. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. Because I have a lot of people that come up to me and they tell me about... Um, people that you can't you can't minister to them no matter what you say they say well jesus is not real and he was you know there was really no historical jesus and there was no moses and there was you know they they deny anything that has to do with the lord well they deny it because they are dealing with the spirit they're dealing with that spirit of antichrist so when they tell you i don't believe that and i can't believe that they're telling you the truth because they are dealing with with a spirit and that is the spirit of antichrist now I, I want again i want to make sure that you understand when you are dealing with these demonic spirits you need to make sure that your life is right because i have seen more times than not you know people making proclamations but they have not really dealt with that spirit and if you have not he will come back and he will bring others with him and as the word of god says your last state will be worse than your first so you need uh, to make sure that your life is in order, that you are living the life that you're supposed to. You know, I'm not saying walk around with wings on your back because none of us do. But again, you know when you are doing the things that you're supposed to do, stand focused on the Lord. That is the main thing. Because I've learned when you stay focused on the Lord, everything else is easy. So I, I want to uh, end there, but, but I wanted to make sure that we covered all all of these are uh, different types of strong men that we're dealing with. Now, I want to say, I, I got a word for you that the Lord gave me, and I don't know if this word is going to apply to everyone, but again, I don't know who it may apply to, but since the Lord gave it to me, I'm going to give it to you. I wrote it down so that I make sure I, I so that I would make sure I wouldn't um, forget what it says. And here it is. Your warfare is strategic and purposeful. You are my special forces and your training is going to be your preparation and testing shall be different than everyone else because you have a special call on your life. You will not be fighting on the front lines. You will be going behind enemy line because you are my special forces. Mighty works requires mighty training. Many are called, but few will be chosen. As I did with my servant Gideon, I would choose few from the many these will be my watchers this is the word that the lord gave me so i wanted to share that with you as encouragement particularly those of you who are going through a lot you see that a lot of things are changing in your life you may or may not have an explanation for it but you know i want you to understand you need to hold on because we're in a new season believers i've been saying it to my ministry since the last year we are entering into a new season and i told them uh, 2019 is going to be different than any year that we've seen and it's really already turning out to be that way so i want you to stay focused on the lord press into him as hard as you can 
because what is about to happen is going to blow your minds. But now there is a select few, the special forces, just like in the military, you have the regular army, then you have the special forces. These special forces are gonna be chosen by God because they're, they're gonna to have to have special training and preparation because of what they're going to be doing. And I pray that God will use me as one of these. I don't know if I'm one or not, but it was incumbent upon me to share the word with you that he gave me. So again, thank you for giving me this time with you. I am so excited about the season that we're in and what the Lord is doing. I look forward to uh, talking with you next week on this session of words to inspire you. And until that time, God bless you. And I love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for joining Words to Inspire You with your host, Pastor John Baysmore. Words to Inspire You is a production of Restoration Christian Ministries Incorporated. Teaching the word, living by faith, growing in grace. We thank you for watching this broadcast and pray that you will continue to partner with us. We invite you to join us again for our next program as we present Words to Inspire You, a time of refreshing.